We ended up having to play a little bit riskier than we would have liked, but we were able to make it all the way from Mallville to Fall Arbor without losing a single Pokemon. After beating Red in the rematch, it was time to make a few preparations before heading headlong into the trainers ahead. Fall Arbor Town holds a lot of utility in Emerald Kaiser. Most relevant currently is finally getting access to evolutionary stones in the Pokemon, which allows us to bump both our Skitty and our Vulpix to their final forms. Most important overall is the ability to cash in our heart scales at the Move Relearner's House that get powerful moves that are otherwise inaccessible, like Rock Slide on Blaziken, Frenzy Plan on Sceptile, or Mirror Coat on Marsh Town. You only get access to 20 throughout the game and are generally expected to save at least 6 for the Elite Four, so you need to be very meticulous about where and when you decide to use them. We won't be catching any of those quite yet, so we turn our eyes to grab the encounters we missed on our way here. The town proper adds Sudawuda, 113 adds Rhyhorn, 112 adds Sandrew, and Fiery Path adds Makarka. All captures went down without issue, but on our walk back to town, we made a huge mistake by triggering a double battle we skipped before. I thought that was a fight we already did! This is fine. You are even more annoying now. Love that. I love that. Amber's a good Pokemon. We got Bronze and Amber. We got two rejected Pokemon versions right in front of you. Reminder. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus Christ. In just one fight after getting evolved, Ninetales became the third casualty of a run that was pretty mistake-free before this point. It being an easily avoidable mistake does absolutely tilt me though, and after a few more fights, we call it for the day to give time for a much-needed mental reset. And with a fresh mind, we're back two days later to start the first mental endurance test of the run, Magma Gauntlet. 14 trainers, dangerous moves like explosion and sword stance, frustration inducing items like bright powder, focus band, and quick claw. And at the very end of it, two six Pokemon team boss fights with Tabitha and Maxi. But what makes it especially devious is Maxi isn't even close to the end of the split. There's 12 fights after him before you get the face flannery, so you have to be very careful about your experience or risk overleveling a key puzzle piece for your shot at your fourth badge. Front number one's main threat is their exploding Magneton with Focus Pan, but with a 20 minute prep session, we're able to bait them in last and dispose of them with our newly acquired Sandrew. And thankfully Grunt 2 and 3 go down without issue. Grunt 4 is arguably the hardest on this side of the mountain, as not only do they have 5 Pokemon on their squad, but have 2 Explosion Mons, which means you'll have to risk getting boomed on by at least one of them. And the choice between the two really isn't that great. Matang, who is clear body, so you can't intimidate it down, and Golem, who is quick claw, that can have it just go first and completely foil your plans. You're a fiend, and I don't like you. We want to see low roll, Giga Drain, and no crit. That is high, medium high roll. One down. We're going to see Torkoal come in. Cool. And no quick claw frog. This part is at least going well. Now we get into the fun part. Thank you for all your watch time. Why did Ninjas come in? I'm happy about it. This means that we're going to have guaranteed uh, no boom on the last Pokemon that comes in, which makes our end game a whole lot cleaner. That is totally fine with us. It has leftovers. So we can just kind of speed through this, honestly. You're just going to get faster. You're already faster than everything, buddy. Cool. Yeah, we knew that Air Slash Crit didn't kill, so that wasn't scary. I don't think we want to learn Super Fang. Imagine, imagine that Berry screws us. Uh, no, we, we weren't going to be Earthquake Kill on Guarantee. So, highest damage move is Earthquake. No boom! Okay. Kingler needs to dodge one more boom. We are faster. We mud shot. Guaranteed to a KO. We just need to see no boom here. Okay. I don't think crit earthquake kills me. <laughs> well, we found out. This does not have a quick claw. We can just mud shot. Pog. And now it is only Golem left, which means it cannot boom because it is the last Pokemon, which is awesome. Then we go Whisk Cast on AP. Cool. So this should be AP. We want to see no Omni Boost. Okay. We are faster. Bubble Beam does one shot. Uh, if it procs Quick Claw, 
then crit earthquake it is a range to kill us a favorable range in our favor but if we just attack faster and hit bubble beam we win cool <laughs> what was i what was i even afraid of why was i even scared we have bomb defusal crab after that is grunt five with their claim to fame being a swords dance sangus all right now here's where it gets scary <laughs> So we go into Kabuto. Swords Dance is terrifying. We are faster. Oh, but this is exactly why we added that one level. Because now Brick Break at max can do 104 damage. And we're Battle Armor, so we can't get crit. And we're faster. So we Rock Slide twice and it dies. So we might even get the flinch here too, and it might just not matter. But double swords dance. All right, buddy. Uh, well, this, how much does quick attack do? Plus four. Does a lot, but not enough. This is guts too. Okay. This first section of the gauntlet nears its end as the 6th, 7th, and 8th grunts get dropped without issue. 9 is a bit trickier with two mons with explosion, one of which is a smirgle with spore, belly drum, and extreme speed holding a focus band, which demands good prep or you can get absolutely destroyed by it. Uh, we still, no, we still have our chest though, so we can, uh, can we take a belly drum extreme speed? We cannot. So we hope it goes for Spore. Uh, but we definitely Rock Slide here, because if we get Rock Slide Flinch, we're in, great, we're in a great spot. It could also do that. Why? Okay, uh, Extreme Speed cannot kill us. Spore would not put us to sleep because we still have a chest, though. We're fine here, and it's not going to explode. Okay. But thankfully, Smurgle decides to completely throw and makes the fight a breeze to close out. Then we've got to mash through a few text boxes to advance the story in Meteor Falls, do a little loop around Hoenn, and head up to Mount Chimney to finish the destruction of Team Magma. Chimney Grunt 1 is the only fight of the four on this side that I'd consider easy. It's got all the hallmarks of a tough fight, explosion, bright powder, focus band, but they're all allocated to unthreatening Pokemon. So to no surprise, they're able to be dispatched on a first try without a hiccup. Grunt 2 is a completely different story. They have Pokemon just as threatening as Tabitha and Maxi, with the only relief the player gets being that they only have five Pokemon on their team. Their opener is Camera Up that has the chance to Quick Claw Boom one of your mods. The odds for it to both get Quick Claw proc and Boom at full health is 1 in 100. So generally your best bet is to take that gamble and pray today that you're not an anomaly. Next is another boomer, Shiftry. And hell, we should probably talk about the third boomer, Gengar, now too. Ideally you want to plan your fight around one of these two being baited in last to avoid their boom. I've gone back and forth about which one is scary as a potential boomer. Gengar with their speed and Shiftry with their band at higher attack. It of course always depends on your box, but currently I leaned on Shiftry as the mon you should try to deal with last. Gremble is the least threatening Pokemon on this team by leaps and bounds. Earthquake, Shadow Ball, and T-Wave all give you a chance to make a free switch to an immune Pokemon to shake off their intimidate. And closing out the squad is Quick Claw Octillery, who has the possibility to be a nuisance with their item combined with Paralysis from Body Slam. But a Pokemon with Cherry Berry that tanks their coverage, like Lantern, should easily win the 1v1. Okay, we click Muddy Water. We hope for no Quick Claw. And if it is Quick Claw, we hope for no explosion. Let's go first. Beautiful. That's the proper way to start it up. This shifty tree uh, is going to Giga Drain or explode. Let's hope for Giga Drain. Eridos, thank you for your service. It was unfortunate, but something that is is bound to happen eventually.
don't love to see that. I mean, we have to make the swap anyway because of the Intimidate. We would like to see Thunder Wave here. I think it's more likely to see Thunder Wave, especially because it's super effective against Baby Blue. Super effective against Baby Blue. Cool. I don't want to jinx it, but just make sure you hit. Cool. That's a kill. And this should be... Oh. Ooh. Maybe it just booms. No poison? Cool. Uh, let's rock slide. Okay. Huntel has five rolls of explosion that does not kill it. See, okay, let's let's think about let's think about I mean this is very, very, very likely explosion. It's below fifty, I think that puts it up to like fifty percent odds. Let me double check this. Seventy five percent chance between thirty and fifty HP. So that is definitely between thirty and fifty HP. I think I'm going into Huntel. Huntail can survive the explosion, but we'd rather have Teapot alive than we would Huntail. Huntail, I wish you the best of luck, brother. It's a range. Ah, we don't love to see it. We do not love to see losing two Pokemon here. We still get Intimidate, right? I was about to say. Uh, Dragon Rage, three hit KOs. And as a quick claw, keep this in mind. You're not going to get an Ice Beam Freeze on me. Cool. Uh, ice Beam Crit. And Body Slam Crit. Body Slam Crit is 76. So we're safe for one more. Ice Beam Crit is 58. 76 is Body Slam Crit again, so we are good, and this will kill. Cool. Ugh. Losing two Mons of the fight before tap. No, I gotta, I gotta re recenter my mindset. We lost two Mons that we kind of expected to lose, just in unexpected ways, and we played around it, and we kept our good Pokemon safe, so that's fine. Gruntube more than lives up to the hype and takes out two of our Pokemon due to the poor planning around booms. It only lost us two months this time, but if we don't step up our prep soon, we might end up losing the whole run next time. And that's where we're going to end this episode off. If you want to pick up where the video leaves off in the VODs, there's a link down in the description. And if you want to watch me stream these runs, subscribe over here on YouTube or follow over on Twitch to watch the dual stream live on either platform. And if you want to keep up on info about the videos and the streams, consider joining the Discord. There's a link down in the description for that as well. And that about does it for me. I've been Saves Untitled. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Peace out.